Hey guys, good Saturday morning. Uh, usually, I'm down here Friday and Saturday, but this week, Friday, yesterday, I went out ATV riding with my boy, off-grid kid. Uh, he put up a video, a short clip, just a couple of three minutes, I think, um, of him and I riding and doing some stuff. So if you haven't checked that out, go over to his channel, off-grid kid, and check it out. Anyway, I'm heading down. I'm going to work my tail off today. It's going to be hot, hot, hot. And uh, hopefully I get some stuff accomplished. So stick around. You ready to have some fun? Yeah, let's go. All right, let's do this. Okay, so I woke up at the crack of dawn this morning. Actually, I woke up around 3 o'clock, so before the crack of dawn. And I just decided to get my stuff together and get out of Dodge and get down here. So I just arrived, and it's a beautiful, tranquil morning. It's, you know, just before 6 a.m. And I'll show you what I'm looking at here as I walk out to the, to the water. Beautiful morning. And uh, I hear all kinds of splashing and splishing, so... I'm going to get my fishing pole and see if I can catch something. Hopefully a pike and grab it out of there. Well, looky here. Something was hungry this morning. I guess it wasn't me. Oh, it's a catfish. Oh, that's my first caddy. Look at that. Look at that. Well, I guess I did have some fish survive. Look at that. My first catfish. Like, literally, I think that's the first catfish I've ever caught. How cool is that? Guess I got down in the weeds a little bit. Got down in the weeds a little bit, and he decided to take it. I felt it kind of snugging up against the weeds, and then bam! Oh, hey buddy. A decent little catfish. Must have been one of the ones I put in there um, a year and a half ago. He was just a few inches then. You now he's probably, what, about a foot? ish oh, cool I'm gonna get him off the hook here and put him back in I want him to grow big 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 might have to eat him someday he might be my food source someday oh wait all right chill out I'll get you in there okay guys this is the crab apple tree and I just came over I was inspecting it look what I found over here hopefully I can get this zoomed in where you can actually see what I want you to see let's do that again refocus Come on, guys, focus. There we go. Those look like pests to me. They're eating the heck out of a couple of these leaves. I gotta get rid of those. Why a crab apple tree, some of you are gonna ask. Well, because it was a pollinator for the other apple tree. So that's why. All right, gang, I uh, just sweating my tuchus off up here. I'm up on top of the camper, I'm putting in uh, couple of the rafter beams there it was hot tamales today I ain't gonna lie we got up to like 94 95 but it's not the heat it's the humidity the humidity is unbelievable it's got to be 98 100 percent whatever um, you walk outside and within two minutes you drench you're just drenched in sweat I've taken two showers already and changed my clothes twice and I'm still a mess um, got some stuff done i framed out the inside of the closet and the end table in the camper and i got two rafter joists up i vacuumed did a whole lot of other stuff stuff the bees look good uh, i didn't open the hive but they look great a lot of a lot of uh, uh bees coming and going throughout the hive there bringing in pollen and whatever else um, I'm not going to feed them this week, see how things go, and if they look like they need it next week, I'll come back and feed them next week, but otherwise, it's time for them to fend for themselves, I think. Well, hey guys, good Sunday morning. I don't even know what the date is, maybe the 4th, maybe the 5th of June, whatever it is. Doing a little bean chat this morning. The last one went off so well, but I figured I'd do it again. I was going to do it last night, but... Truthfully, I didn't have much to say, but I'll tell you this, it rained last night like I haven't seen and I can't tell you how long. It came down fast and furious. Mm.
you know, a lot of you guys said that I made you hungry last time eating the beans. They're delicious. Especially when you're eating them at camp. You ever notice how food just tastes better when you're in the outdoors? So, we had thunderstorms last night. And there were bolts of lightning coming down what looked like right over the pond. I thought, oh my gosh, it's so much louder down here. And, and the rain was so intense that unfortunately it washed out most of the, ro the, the uh, work that I did on the road. But it is what it is. So I got a bunch of work done inside the camper progress. I got two trusses up yesterday afternoon. It's so hot. It was so hot. It's beautiful now. Still raining a little bit. I don't know if you can hear it on the roof. But it was so hot yesterday. You walk outside and just instantly break out in like a sauna sweat. And with the rain this morning, I don't know that I'm going to be able to get back up there on the roof. But man, I got to get that thing covered. So I got two trusses up. It's slow going by myself. But I'll be able to work and um, get that done here. It's taken a lot longer than I thought to rehab this camper. And it's simply more work than I thought. And it's more difficult than I thought. I know, some of you guys warned me. And I thought, ah, a couple of weekends, no sweat. But things just seem to go slower. You know? Either you don't have the supplies that you need, or you know you can only do so much, and, and then the heat kicks in. It is what it is. But the bees look good. The hive is active. Must have a queen in there. But I'm starting to get close to buttoning up the inside of that camper. I say that, and it'll probably take me another two months, who knows. But I'm getting close. Closer. I gotta finish the closet, which I'm almost done. I gotta finish the end table, I'm almost done. Then I'm gonna put the wood floor in. Then, well, then I'm gonna paint. I'm gonna paint first, then put the wood floor in. And then clean everything. Maybe I'll clean everything first. And then um, just put it all back together. And then she'll be protected by the roof. And then we think about the next stage, which is gonna be connecting it to the cabin, cutting the doorway in the back of the cabin, and connecting it. And we're off to the races. Now, we've talked about this quickening feeling, and it's pretty amazing that I'm talking to people and really all walks of life some that are of the prepared mindset, some that are the normies, the sheeple, whatever. And it seems like just about everybody who has an inkling, a brain cell in their head, knows that something doesn't feel right. They know that something's coming. We keep talking about it. And I think we're all waiting for this event, this thing, this light switch. And I'm not sure that it's going to happen like that. At least it hasn't yet. The way it's been going is it's this constant, like, grind. So is that the way this thing's going to happen? We're going to just grind to a halt? Um, I know most of us that prepare are waiting for this light switch event, but I just don't know that that's going to happen. Who knows? It might. It might grind to a point to where then the switch goes on or off. 
But uh, I might have said this in a prior video. I read the book one second after before, and a lot of you people have recommended it. Well, I read it, I don't know, three, four years ago. Weird story about that. Uh, my BMW at the time, when I had a BMW, back when I was still, you know, full on in the Matrix, it broke down. Something happened to it, and I had to call. It was under warranty, so I had to call, and they brought a flatbed out. And the guy that was driving the flatbed, he had a paracord bracelet on. And it's, it's strange that there's, you know, certain things that those of us that are in the know recognize. Well, I was starting to wake up at that point. I wasn't full on into it, but I was starting to wake up. And I knew what a paracord bracelet was. And I knew the kind of people that generally would wear a paracord bracelet are of the prepared mindset. And he also wore a hat that um, also kind of helped me understand that maybe he was, you know, in the prepared mindset. And he said something that and I forget what it was, but it made me clue into the fact that, yeah, this guy is one of us. And so we just started chatting, and quickly, you know, we got from the defensive, you know, coy um, sparring where we were trying to figure each other out to, yeah, this is the way I think, yeah, this is the way I think. So the guy gives me his card, and he went out to his truck and he said, hey, i got a couple of things I want to let you borrow. And one of the things was the book, One Second After. And the other thing was an audio book for the movie Defiance. And um, it wasn't for the movie, for the book. It was an audio book for Defiance. They've since made a movie out of it. And so I read one second after and devoured that. Maybe that was four years ago now. And then I listened to uh, Defiance and have since watched the movie. And I stayed in touch with him for a little while. I tried giving him back his stuff like three or four or five times. He didn't seem interested in never getting it back. Um, and eventually just said, you know, pass it on. So that's what I did. So a bunch of you guys recommended reading the book one second after. And since I already read it, but it got me thinking about it, I said, oh, let me see if it's on YouTube. And sure enough, it is the uh, audio book one second after. And so I listened to it again. And it's strange how many things that I picked up this time around that I didn't the first time around. Like my mindset is different now than it was then when I hear something. I interpret it differently, I process it differently, because I'm in a different mindset. So even if you read the book, it'd probably be a good idea to read it again, because if you're anything like me, you might be in a different mindset today than you were when you read it the first time. And I picked up different things from it this time around. If the lights went out tomorrow, you're talking about a mass extinction in this country. Now, just to give you a little idea about the book. It took place in a mountain town east of Asheville in North Carolina. So it was kind of home, close to home for me anyway. Um, this town was considered successful because only 80% of the population died in one year. Where the majority of the eastern seaboard, it was about 90%. So he was twice as uh, successful. The guy's name was John. He was twice as successful as most other places. Which is kind of unbelievable when you figure only 80% died and you're considered a success. But little things like extra toilet paper or extra food. You know, you realize this guy and everybody was caught off guard because they just weren't thinking that something like that could happen. And it could. And it doesn't have to be from an EMP, a nuclear missile that explodes and bursts uh, high up in the atmosphere. It could be from a sunspot. And we all have probably heard that the sun has been acting erratically lately. And I've heard something about the fact that there's this big dark hole in the sun. I think we all take for granted the fact that you know, the sun's going to come up tomorrow. And you know what, if it didn't, there's nothing you're going to do about it. So I don't suggest you prepare for that. But I do suggest that you prepare for the eventuality that something will go wrong. And it could be a host of different reasons. And think about what you would need to get through another week if the lights went out. What you would need it's great to have electricity and solar, it's, you know, awesome. But what would you need to get through another week?
or another day and start getting that stuff. And I know that and I'm speaking for myself, but I'm sure uh, I'm not alone. We tend to go out and we get a lot of these extras that would be creature comforts or make our lives a little better. And a lot of these things are, you know, if, if we think about it and actually dig into it, they could be kind of ridiculous in some ways. Some of these gear things that we get, what would we need? They talk about in the book how people started trading squirrels and rabbits for ammunition. Ammunition became the currency. And they also talk about the fact that, you know, the forest was pretty much picked clean inside of 60 days. Or maybe it was 30 days. It was relatively quick. I mean, you couldn't get a squirrel. The deer were all gone. That happened back in the Great Depression. Like, who was telling me that uh, one of the things that saw us through the Great Depression was pigs? Because they reproduce so quickly and there's so much meat. Wild pigs. Deer don't reproduce that quickly. Well, pigs do. The other thing that took place in the book that struck me was the fact that the community was what made the difference. It wasn't the individual, it was the community, it was the leadership, it was how they came together. Um, and the reason, or one of the reasons why this town was more successful than many, was the fact that you had a small group of people that came together quickly and set up a structure and set up ration cards and uh, set up a, a system of governing the town that I think most towns probably were a little too late on. If you don't act quickly, um, you know, you're not going to make it. And these guys acted quickly, but they also made mistakes and they wish they did a lot of other things differently or faster. Now, one of the things I think many of us struggle with is how do we know when it's time to get out? And I think we like to think that we'll just know. And when you're reading the book, you know what happened when the lights went out. But they didn't. They weren't sure. And those precious minutes turned into hours, turned into days. And by the third or fourth day, everything was different. Everything was different. And they were much more reactive at that point than proactive. So I think that's what makes us as a group different, is we're proactive. But with that said, we make a lot of mistakes. I make a lot of mistakes. Because I spend a lot of time, money, and resources, energy on things they may not necessarily benefit me or my family during a SHTF situation. But food was at a premium, obviously. So I'm going to continue to try to uh, focus on food. And when I say that, I have my long-term food storage, but I want to continue to try to focus on growing food, um, the permaculture deal. You know, I want to have trees and plants that come back and produce year after year. I can't seem to grow a garden down here. And I just thought, hey, we'd give it a shot. You really have to tend your garden. And if I'm down here once a week, it's not something I can tend on a regular basis anyway. So think about that. So remember, last week we did the Homestead Network at uh, 9 o'clock on Sunday. Brad with Big Family Homestead is on at 7. Then Dirt Patch Heaven at 8. Then yours truly at 9. And then Homestead Anomics at 10. Those are all p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you're in a different part of the country or a different part of the world, adjust your time accordingly. So we'll be doing that every Sunday um, until you guys say, Stop! Please stop! I hate it! And hopefully hopefully this, thing's has, this thing has legs. And I'm not sure exactly where it's going to go or what it's going to turn into. But my desire, my hope, is that it brings us closer together and we get a lot more people involved because again community is what is going to save our bacon 
sure it's great to have the food and the water and the knowledge and the skills and all that, but none of us could know everything. And I know there's a few of you out there that know quite a bit, but I think even you guys and gals would agree that there's no possible way you can know everything about everything. So it's important that we have other people around us that can pick up the slack and know different things. Not to mention, you know, from a security standpoint, you cannot defend yourself against a gang of people. One of the things that happened in that book is that they came up against the posse. Hundreds and hundreds of people that were cannibals and they were coming in to take out the whole town and take anything and everything they had left. And it took the whole town coming together, the whole community coming together to uh, fight back that attack. So that's the whole idea with this Homestead Network thing. That's the whole idea with this channel and it's morphed a little bit over time is we want to build community and get closer together. I want to give a shout out to uh, Harley Cooper because Harley reached out to me when he found out that I was going ATV in with my son, off grid kid. And again, if you haven't checked out that video, it's kind of neat. There's a couple of neat parts riding. Um, so check that out. But he reached out to me and said, "Hey, I, I uh, I'm close to that area, give or take. Why don't we um, hook up?" And we tried to do that, and then my son ended up getting that nosebleed, and so we ended up taking off. But uh, you know, the fact is, he reached out to me, and that was cool. And I was quick to respond, so yeah, I'd like to do it. So we're gonna hopefully get together at some point here in the future. But it's important that we get to know our neighbors, and when I say our neighbors, it doesn't mean necessarily the person right next door, albeit important to do that, I think. You guys are my neighbors. Whether you're down the street or two states over, it's important that we get to know each other a little bit better. And that's why I browbeat you guys into commenting and making your own videos. Because when you watch me, but I don't have a chance to watch you or get to know you through the comments. You might think that you know me and you know me better than I know you, but I don't know you at all. And I want to get to know a lot of you guys. That's all I got.